Welcome to our listeners on Red Kite Radio. It's great to welcome you to our Sunday service for the Witch at Vale. Uh, welcome to you if you're listening, watching this on our YouTube video. Uh, it's great to have you back in Stone Church, where we are continuing to celebrate Easter. By now, most of the Easter eggs are eaten, hot cross buns are things of the past, and we're moving on to thinking about barbecues and, and, the, and the first fruits and tastes of summer. But for the church, we are still thinking about those resurrection stories. We're thinking about how Jesus came, died on the cross and rose again, because it gives us hope and energy for the future. We as Christians declare that it is Christ alone who brings hope to the world. And so we have our opening hymn, In Christ Alone.
Easter is a story of resurrection and of hope, but it's also one that is very hard to believe. It was hard to believe at the time, and it's hard to believe now. How can someone come back to life? Someone who we had placed all our hopes in seems to have failed. And this week's story comes from Luke chapter 24 and it's verses 13 to 35. It's a very famous story called the story of the Emmaus Road. It begins with two friends of Jesus going to a village called Emmaus and that was about seven miles from Jerusalem. What's that? The distance between Tame and Aylesbury. It's a good long walk. It's going to be much of the day and they are talking with each other about everything that is happening. In those days, they didn't have to avoid all the cars. They've just got a dusty track, a few people here and there, the odd goat, the odd sheep, the odd donkey coming past, but pretty well walking on their own. But as they are walking and discussing what had happened to Jesus, a man comes up and walks alongside them. Unknown to them, even though they'd known Jesus, he was kind of in some sort of disguise. The man who is with them is Jesus. They just didn't recognise him. And so he asked them, what are you discussing as you're walking along? Really important for those of us who are Christians uh, and we are fond of telling people the good news of Jesus Christ. It's an important lesson. The first thing to do in telling others about the good news is to listen. I remember when uh, these things, this is a mobile phone, uh, an Apple iPhone, uh, when these things were new uh, and there was a joke that went around, uh, how can you tell if someone's got an Apple iPhone? And the answer was, don't worry, they will tell you about it. The first thing Jesus does is not to tell, but to listen. As they tell the story, their misery increases. And their frustration from one clear pass, are you the only person visiting Jerusalem who do not know what has happened these days? What things? You tell me the story. About Jesus of Nazareth, they said, a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. See, their hopes have been dashed by the religious rulers and by the Roman authorities. Uh, and then this is now the third day since it took place. But it's even more puzzling, they said. Some of our women really took us by surprise. They went to the tomb early that morning and didn't find the body in the tomb. And some of our companions went there and found it was just empty as the women had said but they had not seen Jesus. The women had seen a vision of angels who said Jesus is alive. And at this point, the companion starts to speak. Well, you're really foolish, he said, and slow to believe. Did you not hear Jesus say that the Messiah had to suffer and had to die to enter into glory. And then slowly, in the conversation, Jesus talks them through, takes them back from Moses and the prophets and explains to them everything that was there, everything that was evident. And so they came to the village of Emmaus, the village which seemed to be theirs, and Jesus continued on. 
went to continue on as if he was going further. The second thing in evangelism, which we know, if we're going to tell the good news, is not force your way in like a Jehovah's Witness banging down the door saying, can I come in and tell you about Jesus? He goes on his way and he is invited in. Please come in, they say. Stay with us. It's evening. The day is almost over. And so he went in and met with them. And it was there at the table as the bread came out. And he took it and he broke it and he gave thanks and he gave it to them. Then that was the moment that they recognised him. Their eyes were opened, it said. And it is at that point that he disappeared from their sight. And suddenly they realised that they had always known that there was something special about this person, that their hearts had burned and that they wanted to know more. And so immediately they got up and just having done a whole day's walk to Emmaus, they ran all the way back shouting, it's true, it's true, Jesus is risen from the grave. And... Uh, and, uh, and the people heard this and they were excited. Now, if you are a Christian, just take it very seriously that if you want to tell people the good news of Jesus Christ, first you have to listen, then you have to be invited to speak, and then you have to be invited in. If you don't know this story, tell your story. And as you tell that story, and you tell it to someone who is prepared to listen, you will find Jesus standing alongside you. For me, when I first heard these stories of Jesus, I felt someone who was ashamed and pushed to one side. And I discovered in this story a new way of humanity, that the world didn't have to be a place where people were pushed aside because they weren't as good as other people. For me, it was dyslexia, that I felt at school that I was shamed and that I was not as good as other people. And in this story of Jesus, I found freedom, hope, a new way forward, that God loves me just as much as he loves everyone else. So, take that into your heart and know that he is good. And then you get the energy, the energy to run back and to proclaim Christ is alive. Amen. And so, let us pray. Father, we give you thanks for the ability we have to hear you and to love you, to know you that you walk alongside us in the darkest of times, offering us hope. Through those dark times, you come with words of forgiveness and of love. Help us to live in that way. When people are walking in through dark times, help us to walk alongside them and to listen, to hear their pain and to offer words of comfort and of hope. Jesus, change this world we live in. Give us a new way. And the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now a prayer of blessing. God bless you and keep you. Keep you on your journey. Be with you, walking with you. And if you need to walk, help May he come and give you words of peace and comfort. Amen. Our final hymn is going to be about what it means that we should then do. To serve one another 
Brother, sister, let me serve you.